All right, we're back in 915 Mike Whiskey, and the last calibration that we have to do on the ground is the magnetometer calibration. Uh, so we got it outside for this because we need to uh, have some room to move, and we need to be free from any magnetic interference, so we do this outside. Uh, so the process is relatively simple. First thing we do is get the nose pointed within 5 degrees of north, and then we start the procedure on the screen as it requests. The instructions are very simple. You start at the north position. It's going to do a countdown, and then it's going to ask you to slowly turn right. So you slowly turn right, and there's a bunch of dots that will start disappearing that you'll see. And then when the last dot disappears, it'll ask you to hold position for a few seconds. You hold position, and then you just keep going until you make a circle and a half, roughly, is uh, usually what you end up doing. Before you do that, though, if you are unsure of your magnetometer's positioning or anything like that, you should do a magnetic interference test. Really, you should be doing that before you permanently mount it, but sometimes it's not possible. We know the position on the slings is going to be good, so uh, we'll do the check just to make sure that there's nothing crazy going on, but uh, otherwise, make sure that if you are unsure that you do that check. The other thing that you probably want to do up to this point, if you haven't already, is your AHARS vibration test because the gyros in the AHARS are directly involved with the calibration of the magnetometer so if there's a vibration issue going on besides having attitude problems you also have heading problems now one thing that we've run into quite a bit on the g3x system regardless of aircraft is that for whatever reason the very first go of it asking you to wait before you start turning we have to turn the engine off and it, it must be some kind of vibration related thing even though on all the aircraft that I've ever experienced it in, we've always passed the vibration checks without any issue. For some reason, engine off for the first one, and then after that you can have the engine running for the rest of the procedure. Uh, so if you're having troubles with getting that first one done and your engine's running, shut it off, let it count down, restart, and then keep going. All right, with all that said, we'll bring you inside the plane and we'll get started on the procedure. All right, so we're in the aircraft here. Uh, we've got the nose pointed within five degrees of north, and we got the engine off until we start the calibration procedure. So we're going to go into configuration mode on the G3X, and then we'll start from there. So I'll show you really quickly how to do a magnetometer interference test. We've got the engine running for this. You don't necessarily have to, and in some cases you actually probably shouldn't because what you really should do, at least on the TSI with a steerable nose wheel, is you need to get the weight off of the nose so that you can move the rudders a bit and get the rudder cables moving just to make sure that nothing's uh, going to be a problem there. But uh, we've already done this before so I'm going to forgo that particular piece. But if we go to magnetometer here you can see we've already got ours passed but we'll do it again and you hit start. So I'm going to do things like move the elevator because we've got the push rod back there make sure that's not going to interfere. We've got the beacon light so we'll turn that on. Uh, the wiring is running kind of close but not next to the magnetometer but we still want to check that and make sure we'll run the trim system as well make sure that there's nothing that will interfere so like I said the only thing that we can't show is uh, just because we're you know outside and with the uh, nose wheel on the ground we can't show the rudders kicking over but you're going to want to do that as well so when you're done you hit complete you see our worst case was 11 percent of limit and that happened right when it started but uh, you can go all the way up to 100 percent and uh, if you are at or below that, then you should be just fine. Uh, some older kits, older TSI kits, the magnetometer was close to the luggage compartment underneath the golf bag extension. And if that is you, you really should consider moving that because anything metal inside that luggage extension would cause a magnetometer to, uh, to start going haywire and uh, go well above the 100% limit. So I'll show you real quick the AHARS vibration test. If we go to 80 AHARS here and we go to engine run-up test, this is where you can uh, do your vibration check. So you're going to want to have the aircraft tied down pretty good. You're going to want to make sure your temperatures are appropriate because they want you to do a full throttle run uh, to do this test. For the purposes of video, we're not going to do that, but I'll show you the procedure as, as you should. So we'll hit start on the test. And you can see we're doing pretty good right now. I'm going to make, double check my brake. We'll go a little bit on the uh, throttle. And so far we're doing pretty good. Don't really have too many issues. So I'm going to stick for 4,000 right around here. But 
what you would want to see is that as you go all the way up in your throttle and all the way back, that none of, the, none of these go above 100% or even close to it, really. 100% is technically the allowable limit, but you don't want to be there because anytime you hit turbulence, these percentages go way up. So the further away from 100 you're starting with, the better off you'll be in uh, all phases of flight. Um, but you can see that we're doing pretty good as it is right now at about a third power. And I know for a fact on the TSIs in our location that uh, full power would be no problem. So that's the test. You hit done. And you can see that we passed 21 to 19% in this particular case. And then we'll hit done again. And then um, you can proceed on. Again, this test should be done if you're unsure of your mounting before you calibrate the magnetometer. Uh, and frankly, before you even commit to that position anyways, uh, because if that test fails, when you're flying along at full throttle for takeoff, you're bouncing around, you're going to run into a situation where your AHARS is going to start getting all squirrely. Um, sometimes it can tumble, it can do all kinds of weird things. The worst case, or the best case scenario is you get a heading miss, or a, uh, attitude rather, miscompare. And, um, you know, it's annoying and, and you'll see like your G5 is straight and level, but your GSU is showing, you know, a 10 degree left bank or something. So. With that test and with the magnetometer test passed, um, we can proceed to calibrating the magnetometer. All right, so in configuration mode here, the first thing we're going to do is open up the magnetometer page. We're going to look at the magnetometer orientation, make sure that that's set correctly, in our case, connector is forward, and that's referencing the nose. Uh, if you haven't done so already, now is a good time to do the magnetic interference test. That's where you're going to turn on different electrical equipment in the aircraft, move the stick, move your rudder, anything that could possibly get in the way of that magnetometer's uh, magnetic field, make sure that you do that. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and start the calibration now. So we'll click on it. It's going to give you some instructions in here. Another one's telling you, make sure that you're not going to pass within 20 feet of magnetic materials, such as steel grates, pipes, all that stuff. That's important because these things are very, very sensitive. So make sure that uh, you heed these instructions. Uh, so we're in a good position, so we're going to hit start. It's asking us to hold current position. You can see that we've got these dots over here. We're going to wait for that to count down and disappear. And then it'll tell us to start turning right slowly. And uh, at that point, we'll start the engine. OK, we got the turn right slowly. Let me go ahead and get the engine fired up, and then we'll do that. Now I'm going to release my parking brake, and I'm going to do my slow right turn. We're going to watch for these to count down and disappear, and that's when we're going to stop. So I'm going to clear my area, and I'm going to start the turn. Okay, we're going to hold position. Again, those are going to count down, and then it's going to ask us to turn right slowly. And we're going to do that, and we're just going to keep going through this process over and over again until we make a complete 360, and actually even a little bit more than that sometimes. I think, like I said earlier, about a turn and a half. All right, so we made one complete turn in this case, and that was enough for the uh, G3X to call this a success. So we're just going to hit the Done button, and that's it. Now we can go ahead and save and reboot, and we will just verify that the uh, heading comes up appropriately. All right, so we've got our heading up here, 356, which is just about right. We're not totally perfectly north. So uh, everything looks good on here. Um, if you want to, one thing you can do is just taxi around a little bit and make sure that uh, it is repeatable. But uh, we haven't had too many issues with these before as long as they get calibrated right the first time. All right, so with the magnetometer calibration complete and with the accuracy of the heading verified, that closes out the series of ground calibrations and checkouts for the G3X system. The next thing that we're going to have to do is calibrate our angle of attack and our autopilot in the air. So after this aircraft makes its maiden flight and we start our phase one flight testing, we'll come back with those videos and show you how it's done.